Welcome to Electro Online, and here's another example of how to apply what we call a double slit interference pattern on something else, not actually a double slit. Here we have two antennas that are 9 meters apart, and they're broadcasting a radio station, let's say at 120 megahertz. What will be the interference pattern, or something like that? And the effect is as if it was a double slit interference pattern. So we use the very same equations as we would use for a double slit problem. We know that the intensity of electromagnetic radiation can be calculated using this, this being the RMS value of the electric field oscillations of the waves. The total energy, the total energy in a double slit situation is going to be two times the energy of a single slit times the cosine of, of uh, phi over two. Of course, phi is the phase angle between the two. And yes, indeed, as two waves travel to a certain point in space, they're going to travel a different distance, so there's going to be a phase angle difference between the two waves. The maximum intensity of two waves coming together from a double slit problem, which is also applicable to something like this with two antennas, is going to be four times the intensity of a single wave times the cosine squared of the phase angle divided by two. So if the angle is zero degrees, if the phase angle is zero, the intensity of two waves coming from a double slit will be four times the intensity of a single wave. Kind of interesting. Also, the relationship between the phase difference, phi, and the angle theta, the angle theta is the directional angle from where we're going to consider the point of interest. So the point directly across the two antennas would be zero angle, and then an angle at a distance this way, or an angle distance this way, we have the angle theta there. And there's a relationship between theta and the phase angle phi, and there's the relationship. All right, so we're going to use those equations in trying to determine, first of all, the angle theta, the phase angle phi, and the intensity at that particular location when the extra distance traveled by one wave compared to the other is 1.8 meters. Remember, the distance between the two antennas is 9 meters. So what we need to find here is we need to find the wavelength of this broadcasting station at 120 megahertz. We know that the speed of light C is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So the wavelength is equal to C divided by the frequency. So it's equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by the frequency, which is 120 times 10 to the 6th hertz. And so the answer comes out in meters. So what do we get here? We have 3 e to the 8 divided by 120 e to the 6th. And that gives us 2.5 meters for the wavelength. All right. So that's equal to 2.5 meters, which means that the phase angle, which can be calculated like this, the extra distance divided by the wavelength times 360 degrees, so the phase angle is equal to extra distance traveled by one wave over the other divided by the wavelength times 360 degrees. So the extra distance traveled was given to us as 1.8 meters. The wavelength is equal to 2.5 meters. So that ratio times 360 degrees is equal to, all right, 1.8 divided by 2.5 times 360. And that's 259.2 degrees. 259.2 degrees, which is called the phase angle difference between the two waves when they arrive at some point in the distance right there. Secondly, we're trying to find this angle theta. Theta can be found by using, uh, let's see here, do I have that on here? Yeah, in a way, extra distance travel equals d sine theta. That's right here. You can look at this triangle right here. This is d. There's the angle theta, there's the opposite side, so therefore the opposite side is equal to the hypotenuse d times the sine of theta. So we can say that the extra distance traveled is equal to d sine theta. That means that sine theta is equal to the ratio of the extra distance traveled divided by d. And therefore, we can say that theta is equal to the arc sine of the extra distance traveled divided by d, which means it's the arc sine of 1.8 meters divided by the distance between the two antennas, 9 meters. So let's take the calculator again. So 1.8 divided by 9, take the arc sine, inverse sine, and we get 11.5 degrees on that. Okay, so it's equal to 11.5 degrees. And finally, we need to find the intensity 
relative to the intensity that you would have if you take, took a point directly across. So what you see is you're going to see an antenna pattern, the same, as, the same effect as if you have double slits. So you're going to see a pattern of high intensity, low intensity, high intensity, low intensity, and so forth. So we want to find the intensity at that particular point, realizing, of course, that at the value right here, so this is going to go down and then back up and so forth. And so here we get I max, which is going to be equal to four times the intensity of a single wave right there. And so we now want to know what the intensity is over there relative to the max intensity of the central maximum right there. So the intensity right here is going to be equal to four times the intensity times the cosine square of phi over two. So we could say that the intensity is equal to four times the intensity of a single wave times the cosine squared of the phase angle divided by two, plugging in the values, four times the initial intensity times the cosine squared of, and the angle we have here, the phase angle was 259.2 degrees, 259.2 divided by two degrees. And so we take 259.2, we, take, we divide that by 2, that gives 129.6 degrees. We take the cosine of that, and then we square that value. Okay, And so we have, this is equal to 4 times I sub naught times 0 0.406. That's good enough, 3 significant figures. Uh, so that would be a fraction less than 1. And so times 4 equals, that would be 1.6. 2,5 I sub naught. Now, we got to be careful what that means here. Remember, I sub naught was the intensity of a single wave, the intensity of two waves together at an angle of, uh, where we go, 11.5 degrees. We get an intensity of 1.625 times the single intensity, but if we want to compare that to the maximum intensity right here, we can say that I is equal to 0 0.406 times I max. So when we take the max intensity here, it's dropped off to intensity of a, a little bit over 40% of the maximum value if you're pointing directly forward. So that's how we find the intensity at this location. We find the phase angle, uh, phase angle phi right there, uh, we find that right here, and then we find the angle at which we have to look away from the di direction directly ahead of the two antennas. So we take the two antennas, instead of looking straight ahead, we're at an angle of 11.5 degrees. Intensity at that point would be 40.6%, the max intensity when the antenna is pointing directly forward. And that's how we apply double-slit interference pattern to an antenna pattern like this.